hey Celebration family and all those who are joining us for a discipleship class, a Christian Basics 101 class. So the subject that I felt like the Lord wanted me to share with you guys is teaching us how to pray. And that's the title of this message is Teach Us How to Pray. Um, so I want to open up in prayer first of all, which is exactly what we're going to learn about. So uh, join me, Father God. How we love you and cherish you always, Father. I just pray, Father God, right now that you would use me as an instrument. Speak through me, Father, and continue to be the center of focus of my life. Father God, teach us how to pray and how to come before you, Father God, and to build that relationship with you, Father. Teach us the very basics, Father, of how to pray. Father God, show us where we fail daily in our time with you. Father God, give us the wisdom that we need. Father, you said if any of you lacks wisdom, ask. And that's what we need, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so one of the greatest writers that I studied this subject on was A. W. Tozer. And he says in his book this, and it's, it's lengthy, but bear with me. He says in his book, but you, when you pray, he opens up with Matthew 6, 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Among the, and this is where, this is where um, um, A.W. Tozer starts to share he says, among the enemies of, to devotion, none is so harmful as distractions. Whatever excites the curiosity, scatters the thoughts, disquiets the heart, absorbs the interests, or shifts our life focus from the kingdom of God within us to the world around us, that is a distraction, and the world is full of them. Our science-based civilization has given us many benefits, but it has multiplied our distractions and so taken away far more than it has given. The remedy for distractions is the same now as it was in earlier and simpler times. Prayer, meditation, and the cultiv cultivation of the inner life. The psalmist said, be still and know. And Christ told us to enter into our closet Shut the door and pray unto the Father. It still works. Distractions must be conquered or they will conquer us. So let us cultivate simplicity. Let us want fewer things. Let us walk in the Spirit. Let us fill our minds with the Word of God and our hearts with praise. In that way, we can live in peace, even in such a distraught world as this. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, from the set of sailor. And then again, Christ in his high priestly prayer specifically states, I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. That's what Jesus said in John 17, 9. That is what he said. It only remains to learn by reverent comparison with other scripture, just what the words mean. To insist that by these words Christ meant that he never prayed for sinners would be to read into the words more than is there. We must remember that these words were spoken in a particular context. The great high priest was appearing before the throne of mercy as advocate and intercessor, and could at that time include in his prayers only those who were his own. When a high priest of the Old Testament appeared before the, excuse me, before the mercy seat to offer blood for the sins of Israel, his intercessions extended to Israel only. They were the only ones for whom that atonement was made. They were the only ones who trusted in him and looked for him, looked to him for help. 
Christ came in fulfillment of the Old Testament type. And it may, sa may safely be assumed that the prayer of John 17 was made only for those who accepted Christ's atonement and avail themselves of the protection it af affords. And that comes out of our ever-living intercessor. The world wants a fast food style of prayer. Let me get in, order what I want, and be on my way until the next time I get hungry. But Christ does not want us to have that kind of quick get in and out mentality. Prayer takes time. For it was not designed, God did not purpose prayer to be a quick service. To ask God to give them something, to give us something and then leave and expect the answer to be yes. Although he does still answer that question with yes. He still expects us to come into the throne room and fellowship with him. Cheryl Salem talks often on this subject, and her title also was Teach Us How to Pray. She says to shut all the doors that are open and are acting as distractions to your time with God. This is not a new concept. Prayer is the most vital Part of our walk. If we don't have a prayer life, then we start to lose ground. And this has been proof in my life when I have started to lose that ground and I started getting to where the distractions became more important to me. The TV, my phone, an a interesting book that I'm reading, work, my family, even my family becomes a distraction and can become a distraction for you as well. We can't let anything come in between our time with Christ. Prayer helps us to develop in our relationship, to grow and to understand who God is. If we're not sitting down and spending time with our Lord, then how can we know the plans he has for us? How can we know the direction he wants us to go in? How can we know the heart of God if we do not sit down to pray? James 5.13 says, If any of you are in trouble, let them pray. Now, I'm not saying that we should not come before the Father and ask for anything because when we're in trouble, he expects us to come. And it says right there in James 5.13, if any of you are in trouble, let him pray. But I was also reading A.W., excuse me, Andrew Murray. A.W. Tozer was previous. I was reading Andrew Murray. He starts out, his subject is pray without ceasing. If the spiritual life is, a, is healthy, under the full power of the Holy Spirit, praying without ceasing will be natural. And it's like a muscle that you build up. The more you do it, the stronger you become in it. We have to enter our closet for special seasons of prayer. And we are at times to persevere there in persistent prayer. We are also all the day to walk in God's presence with the whole heart set upon heavenly things. Without set times of prayer, the spirit of prayer will be dull and weak. Without the continual prayerfulness, the set times will not benefit us. We have to set time to pray. And it's something that becomes better with time. And I know many of us have sat down in our prayer closet and we have felt awkward. What do I say? Where, where, where do I start? Is he even listening? But the more you sit in that time and you start to just share whatever, it starts to grow into things to pray. And we can't go in with this, I have to do this, this is normal this is just what the bible says and i have to do it we have to go with a hunger and a desire 
We have to long to be in that prayer closet. And we have to long to spend time with our Heavenly Father. We should pray because we know what happens when we pray. Prayer becomes pertinent to move mountains. Bodies are healed and lives are changed. It should be a hunger. And the more you do it, the more you hunger. Hunger for his presence, hunger to be in his, in his throne, under his guiding, under his Holy Spirit. How can I learn to pray? This is what Andrew Murray says. The best way of learning to do a thing, in fact, the only way is to just do it. So I just challenge you today, just do it. Go into your prayer closet. Close the door. Get your scripture out and just start praying. Just do it. Begin by setting apart some time every day, <clears throat> 10, 15 minutes. You can start out with that. And I promise you, by the time you get into it, the more you do it, the more time you spend in his presence. And it gets longer and more extenuated. And before you know it, you're spending an hour, two hours, and you didn't even realize it. That's how awesome prayer is, and that's, it's, it's important to do it that way. Begin by setting apart some time every day, 10, 15 minutes, in which you say to God and to yourself that you come to Him now as an ancestor for others. That's a good thing. That is, that is one aspect of it. You pray for other people, you pray for the nation, you pray for leaders, you pray for yourself, you pray for your family. There is nothing in prayer time that you have to leave out. Pray for it. Pray for whatever it is in your spirit. Because it's conversation with your Father. It's conversation with the one who created you. It is vital. As the heart is vital to the rest of your body, so is prayer. In order for the blood to stream through the rest of your body, in order for circulation to happen and, and your limbs to still have movement, you have to have your heart beating every single day. However many times it beats in a day. No different than in prayer. And not just that time that you sit aside 15, 10, 15 minutes in the morning or, have, or in the evening, whatever works for you. It's not a cut and cookie cut way of doing it it's not a certain time it's just simple set some time apart if it's your lunch break at work and that's the best time you can get away from everything to sit down and pray so be it but praying without ceasing praying is not just that time it's all day long it says pray without ceasing that means continuously that means in everything that you do, communicate with the Lord daily. I don't know if you've ever caught yourself driving down the road and you're in the car and you just, the radio, you had it on, you just decided to turn it off and, and all of a sudden you catch yourself talking. You're talking to the Father and He's listening to you. And then two or three months later, you look back to something you were talking about and the Lord answered it. it it's amazing and it catches me off guard sometimes, and I'm just in, in awe. Lord, you were listening to me. And I started to realize how much God is right there in our midst. He's, he's conversing with us. He's listening to us. So don't ever fail when you're just by yourself and you don't have anything else going on. Don't ever fail to just sit down and talk to the Lord. He's listening. But the key thing is this, no one ever just sits down, and I don't care when you listen to these people with all these wordy prayers, wordy prayers, you know, he talks about that in the, in the Bible, about wordy prayers and people who go on and on and on with this righteous prayer. No, nah, it's just conversation. It's just conversation with the Lord. It doesn't have to be extenuated. It doesn't have to be uh, extensive, excuse me, extensive. It doesn't have to be deep and thirty it's just i mean think about when you sit down with your parents when you were younger come with that childlike prayer 
just come and just, I just want to sit on my daddy's lap. And just climb up there and sit on your daddy's lap. And I promise you, he loves it. He loves when we come and just sit with him. But people come with this, you know, you hear it in the church, even people who are new believers, and they, they've got all these big, huge, wordy prayers, and you're just, you just feel so inadequate. But listen, you don't have to, because one does not just learn in one day. When you first get saved, you don't wake up and say, oh, I know how to pray. I know exactly what to say. I know exactly how to say it. That's not the case. As a new believer, you're going to be challenged in that. That's going to be one of your first tests in life is how to pray. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. It doesn't necessarily mean that right then it's like, boom, there's a Ferrari in my car. Boom, or a Ferrari in my, a Ferrari in my driveway. <laughs> It's not an instant thing, necessarily. Sometimes it's just spending time and just laying it out, and it helps you with your being anxious. Um, um, but most importantly, it's just the practice of it. Just do it. So I challenge you, and I'm going to close at this. Um, and there's, I could just keep on going. I really could. Um, but... At this point in time, I'm going to close it at this. I want to challenge you, and I want to just make this request to you guys to take 15 minutes every single day if for just one month. If you don't believe me, just try it for one month. Sit down in your prayer closet. Make a prayer closet. Maybe we need to go on that subject of what a prayer closet is. But what I mean by prayer closet is that set-apart time and that set-apart place where there's nobody around there's no distractions. And just sit down with the Lord. And don't say anything until something comes to your mind. And watch and see if God doesn't... I mean, even if you start to prayer out with, Lord, I don't know how to pray, but I'm coming before you. And the next thing you know, 15 minutes has gone by and you have said a whole lot of stuff. And the Lord heard every word of it. And then there's also times where you sit quietly and the Lord speaks to you. But no matter what, get into that practice every single day. Get into that practice of sitting down and praying to the Lord and asking Him. Asking Him. Talking to Him. Sharing with Him. I don't care if you're sitting down. I, I know I've, I have went into my prayer closet before and all I could do was cry. Especially when I first got saved because there was so many wounds that I was dealing with at the time. And all I could do was cry. And I sat in that prayer room and bawled my eyes out and I came out and I felt like I was, like a burden had been lifted off of my shoulders. There's a, a, um, a little quote that I came across one time. And it said, it said, um, how did it go? When you pray, sometimes use words. Sometimes prayer is not necessarily words with your mouth. God hears your heart. And he knows when you're going through something. He knows everything about you. Prayer is not because he doesn't know. Prayer is because he wants you to come to him. But listen, um, I want to read this. I'm gonna, I know Pastor Vanji has broke this. Uh, Pastor Vanji has broken down this this prayer that um, is in uh, my keyboard. Does it want to work? Bear with me. I'll get there. I left out where this was in the scripture, but you know what it is. So I'm going to look it up really quick because I don't want you to miss this. It's the prayer scripture. Teach us how to pray, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus' teaching on prayer is in Luke 11, 1 through 4. And I apologize for taking a minute to find that, but I just really wanted you to know where it's at. Uh, Luke 11, 1 through 4, it says, Lord, teach us, how to, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. That start now to give God honor and glory and acknowledge him first and your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also sin, excuse me, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, who has offended or wronged us. And lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. Parable of persistence. Then he said to them, Someone should one of us, one of you as has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, this is going further than I really wanted to go. Um, this is where I was going with that. So, Later on in the scripture, verse 9, it says, So I say to you, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on asking persistently receives, and he who keeps on seeking persistently finds. And to him who keeps on knocking persistently, the door will be opened. And the emphasis was on persistently, and this is the amplified version. So when we go into prayer, that's what we're doing is we're seeking him and we're knocking and we're, we're um, asking and we're praying and we're seeking the Lord out. And he says that if you do this, if you do this, then the door will be open to you and you will receive because if you don't go to the Father and ask Him, and you don't seek Him in these things, and you don't go into your prayer closet, and you don't, you don't have that relationship with Him that you can share, and you can talk, and you can commune with Him, then you can't say when you don't get it what you're asking for, or what you're wanting, and you don't get it, then you can't say, God didn't answer my prayer because you didn't ask Him. Ask Him. Go to the Father. He desires to have that relationship with you. And I know I said I was closing at this. And just as we tell pastor. <laughs> and then closing. Um, but, you know, I just want to close at that. I just want to say, seek the Lord out. Go into your prayer closet. It is so vital. Your relationship will grow. You will develop strongly in your relationship with the Lord. If you take your time and you go pray. And don't rush. And don't... Um, don't miss out on what God has for you. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to me. I know I got a little distracted there for a few minutes, and, and um, I'm a little winded on this one today, but I appreciate y'all bearing with me. So if you have any questions, please, by all means, get with Cindy, get with the pastors, reach out to me. Someone will help you. This walk is not something that you just wake up one day, I'm a Christian, and I know the answers. It's not the case. You grow in Christ. So get help, ask questions, seek the Lord out, go get into your word and pray. I love you guys. Till next time. Bye.